All right, we're doing take two. <laughs> Trying this again, kids. Uh, you know, um, that is just wackadoodle. Um, I am very confused why the mic. I worked on this all week, so it didn't happen again what happened last week. Um, I'm going to pen this up there. Y'all can make comments. Um, is the mic still hot, you guys? Craig, is can you hear me better? I, I unplugged it and everything went to shit. Um, so, y'all, if you can tell me if you can hear me any better. I know this mic's been working great in my Zoom interviews. Um, can somebody give me a thumbs up? And this is the best I can do. Uh, I've been... <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Audio is great. Thank you, Richard Mott. Perfect. Thanks, dude. What would you like to talk about since you're the first dude in here, person? Um, thanks, Richard Mott. Thanks for coming. Uh, as I was trying to uh, to um, say before, <laughs> it's just nice to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, the main thing is just showing up for this uh, Hate Street Voice Live What's Up Wednesdays where we talk about everything but the kitchen sink, but people have pointed out that we could talk about the kitchen sink if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's about community. It's about the Hate Street Voice. Uh, just be in a place where people can talk about whatever they want to talk about can be hyper-local means community, community here in the hate, but also community, you know, hyper-local with a global perspective. So again, I, what I was trying to talk about before I so really got uh, cut off, and I will no longer unplug this little puppy, um, is the bikes that they put in here on Hate Street um, as of, God, was that yesterday? Um, there's a big row of bikes that took up eight parking spots on Page at Masonic. Um, and, you know, I think it's great for the environment, but it did take up eight parking spots in my neighborhood that I've lived in for a zillion years now. Um, God, it's been 13 years here in this apartment, my beloved apartment. Um, hey, Richard, is the audio still good? Uh, can you, is the video good? Can people see me? Um, thumbs up, some something in the comments. I'm going to say... Pardon my typing, but the sound is, how is the video, y'all? Um, hey, Richard, where are you chiming in from? Where do you live? Where do you habitat? Oh, hey, Robert Gungora. Sounds and looks great. Thank you. Yay. Better than last week's disaster. But you know what I uh, decided? Video stops and starts. Well, I'm not going to screw with it. Um, I, I'm happy that I can see comments. I don't know why the video would be stopping and starting. It seems to be tooling along. Um, I don't want to mess with it because I wonder why it's stopping. It. Maybe that's your connection there? Um, I don't want to blame you, Richard. but. Um, stops and starts I have no idea what that is about but thanks for chiming in Richard Mott Robert Gagoria gone gone gora um, nice to have you guys here um, I am gonna pop this out maybe that'll help the video nah um, do tell me if uh, that video keeps stopping and starting. But anyway, I'm going to keep talking about the bikes that, that showed up on Cole Street on hee hee, tolerable. Tolerable. <laughs> How bad is it? Is it like a big glitch? I don't know. There's much kitchen sink. We could talk about the glitch or the kitchen sink or the, 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 the freaking bikes that, oh, and I want to get these guys to sponsor me. I want, I want free kombucha for the rest of my life. Um, this stuff's so good. Who knows? What about video? Oh, the toler... Uh, Richard, you're saying the video's tolerable? Might be on your end. 
Somebody else, Robert, is are you is the video coming in and out for you, Robert? Can you tell me that? Um, who else is here? Who else we got? It doesn't even tell me how many folks I got in the room. Um, I wonder if I expand. I'm terrified to expand the video. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, but, man, I'm happy that I got the comments working, y'all. Or It's not even that it was working. I did find out that um, a lot of people, in fact, I wrote it on the last week's What's Up Wednesday oh, video. is good. Thank you, Robert. Yay. Um, a lot of people are having with uh, problems with uh, it's all good. Audio is awesome. Video is good here. Thanks, Dan. Hey, deadhead person. And you see Jerry, I got, well, let's see which way. There's Jerry walking down Haight Street, 1968. On the, better audio now. I didn't do anything, so who knows? Well, all right, Matthew Crutchfield, John B. Krug, welcome, y'all. Um, we are just doing a little roll call. It's 7.09 right now. And welcome to Haight Street Voice Live. What's up, Wednesdays? I'm having a little kombucha and um, letting people sort of roll in. And uh, where are you guys coming in from? Uh, Dan, you live in the city, don't you? Dan Guliano. Matthew, where are you, where are you coming in from? John, where do you live? Hmm. You don't have to tell me. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> I mean, pretty clearly I live in the hate. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about that, uh, the bikes that came in um, that were put in on my street here. Richard Mark. North San Francisco. Ooh, Colorado. Nice, dude. Nice, Dan Guliano. Colorado must be snowing. Oh, cool. Robert, you're here in the Upper Hate. Awesome. Forgive me. I mean, sometimes I know people by face and then I see the name and I'm not sure, but you're in the hood. So, Robert, I'm curious. What do you think about these bikes that they just put in on um, Page and Masonic? Took up eight parking spots. Um, I'm not anti-bikes, but uh, I don't have one, um, and I don't drive that much. I work from home. I'm home a lot, but I like being able to have a, a vehicle, and these bikes coming in took up eight parking spots, and, um, you know, this whole thing. I thought it would be an interesting topic to talk about because, you know, the share the road thing, um, and I know that people riding bikes saves the environment and everything, but... The, it's pushing out all the cars. People are going to continue to have cars, but now it's just like more tickets. They, they're charging for you to be downtown, um, you know, to go through certain parts of Market Street, although I rarely leave the hate, so I kind of don't really know about that. But um, I don't know. Hey, Cynthia. Cynthia Johnston. Yay. Sound is good. Can, is the video breaking up for you? Uh, we are talking about, uh, I am. And people are chiming in. Richard Mott. John is in Florida. Oh, Richard and, and John are friends. Uh, Robert. Okay, about the park, about the bikes, excuse me, y'all. Robert Gregoria, who lives up here in the Upper Haight, that's a lot of parking spots, and that means more cars will be driving around and more looking for parking spots, wasting gas and polluting the environment. Totally, right? All right, we got people coming in. We got Firefly and Kali up in Marin, y'all. Thanks. Thanks for joining in. Matthew Crutchfield, you're checking in from Umper, Umper. <laughs> Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I was going to say the Upper Peninsula, what, San Mateo, but of Michigan, damn. All right, Michigan in the house, y'all. Uh, what else we got? Dan, you're in the hate a lot. Of course you are. So Dan Guliano is on board here, y'all. He wrote a book. Of course, that's my book back there. But he didn't write it, but he collects stories for, uh, what is it? I, oh, this is terrible. It's Deadheads. It's Deadheads, stories from Deadheads, from by Deadheads, if that's the way, a good way to say it. Um, sorry, okay. So let's say we're going back. We're going to have a couple conversations going on here. Okay. Cars are the bane of existence. Fuck cars, says Richard Mott. Well, you know, um, Dan says, I'm in the hate a lot. Did they find room for the spots they took for the bikes? No. No, that's the thing. As I mean, I'm born and raised in the Bay Area, and I went to SF State back in the 80s, and parking was horrible back then. 
um, it's still horrible and people are always going to drive cars this is a city that's what gets me it's not <laughs> what is it going to be all bikes in an urban city I, that's sort of the I agree that bikes should be a possibility and I'm not anti bikes and I got to be careful here because I know it's good for the environment but y'all uh, truth is you can't just take away all the parking spots and have all the bikes come in and then there's this really you know there is a kind of an ugly thing that happens with um, you know bicyclists and, and, and motorists that you know sometimes they act like they rule the road and you know anyway cars okay that's all right uh, Charlie Kaz is in the house from Sea Cliff. Oh my God, Craig McDonald checking in from Wichita, Kansas. This is so sweet. Uh, Cynthia says video good. You agree with Robert on losing those parking spots? Hmm. Yeah, Cynthia, you stayed here in my place taking care of my little kitty cat for a week, and uh, you know how that is. Um, Deadhead stories. Thank you, Dan. That's the name of Dan's book. In fact, I could run out and get it and hold it up for y'all but check out Dan Guliano puts together a thing via all the fans for the fans by the fans yeah those fans being deadheads and my book is deadhead stories from fellow artists friends and followers you can see it back here that's good old Jer walking down hate street 1968 a photo taken by the lovely wonderful Steve Brown who we love who worked with Cherry for seven years back in I think starting in 72 he's in the book um, but this isn't about the book it's about the wonderful people that are showing up for this right now you know this is really it's really nice um, you know I was playing the clash when I started this about that song called know your rights and I thought it was kind of a funny thing about um, oh thanks Dan says the cover is beautiful I appreciate that um, but uh, the clash saying you know know your rights which is not to be killed food money free speech um, and I, I was kind of just thinking about the way the hate is and, and, and kind of curious about people's take on how the hate is now. Uh, living here for boy, 30 years in the neighborhood with some 10 years in New York, but I don't know if because I live here, I just really feel like there's still hope um, and, and a, a good vibe that, that wants to rise to the surface here. And I know that there's things that are messed up sometimes but I think that's true in every freaking city all over the planet don't you guys I think that there's a a high standard for the hate Ashbury that it's supposed to be all peace and love and obviously that can't be the case so um you agree let's see I'm looking sorry you guys I'm looking at my notes while I talk I'm just so glad everybody's showing up this is really nice Charlie Cat says, I agree too about the bikes. They put in a bunch of the bikes on 18th Avenue and the parking space is missed by many. Although the bikes sit unrented much of the time. Totally. In fact, I was watching it from my stoop today and only two people came and got them. Well, I was out there for four hours. But um, they need to find a way to make bike rentals available without taking up so much parking. I know. Why don't they put it like at the edge of the park or... I don't understand and I, I do think it's kind of like a way to push people with cars to have to get a garage to they'll get more parking tickets um, funneling all the people with cars which is a lot of us um, you know into having to I mean I think it pretty much probably does come down to money y'all um, thank you for chiming in on that Charlie I agree with that I totally agree with that I like that um, Craig says, any stories on the banners that got stolen in 1978? Which banners are you talking about, um, Craig McDonald? Uh, Firefly says, the hate seems better than it was in the 90s. Oh, for sure. Um, the 70s were pretty damn bad. That's when it got really ugly. And then the 90s, yeah, the 90s was bad too. I think it's... Um, I mean, there's a lot of stores that are closed down. In fact, uh, I don't know if you all knew, but the um, the Red House 
which was supposedly where Jimi Hendrix lives. I don't know if that was true uh, for a minute, but anyway, it's right next to Gus's Market up here in the Haight. It's shut down. It's empty now. Um, it had a beautiful big backyard. Cynthia, I don't know if you remember going back there, smoking a joint. God, that was a few years ago. They had that, well, they have Jerry painted back there. And Anyway, that's closed as of last week. Um, so yeah, a lot of places have closed up. Um, more so than I kind of realized and I was walking around going, oh shit and the Red Victorian, that's something that I'm trying to figure out what's going on there um, if Michael Xavier who runs the Hate Street Fair chimes in um, he might know I'm trying to figure out what happened to the Red Vic and what's going to happen that's a huge space I used to go see movies there all the time with the with the, um, the uh, oh my god what's it called the um, uh, uh, the yeast as the salt. You guys remember that? Okay, let me let me look back on these notes here. Um, Dan says, Dan Guglione says, pretty soon it will be like New York and cost more to drive than live. <laughs> New York's a whole nother can of worms, though, I have to say. I lived there seven years, and man, I never drove in New York. The subway system's so fucking good, and also the buses, and you can walk everywhere in New York, you know? It's fucking flat. I love that. You just got to know where to walk. Um, and the subway is badass. And BART isn't exactly working. <laughs> there is no BART, you know, really uh, getting people around extremely well throughout San Francisco. I mean, there's no BART in uh, the Hate Ashbury. Um, that's funny. Craig McDonald. I remember the car chase through the city. Which car chase? Uh, well, what are you talking about? Bullet, <laughs> Craig? Remember that movie, y'all? Uh, Steve McQueen? Bullet? Was that Steve McQueen? Yeah. Uh, John Krug says, a lot of bikers hate pedestrians and think sidewalks are bike lanes. Yeah. Ouch. I ride buses a lot. All right, man. Uh, yeah, I hear you. You know, that's the, you know what? That's the bottom line, I think, y'all. I think it, let's just respect everybody. You know, even though cars might, you know, I think somebody who said fuck cars, is that you, John? Um, but, you know, uh, we all we all got a right to do whatever it is that we dig. Like, if you dig bikes, cool, go do your bikes. You know, you dig cars, go do your car. Um, you ride the bus, cool. And, yeah, I mean, buses, you know, bus is a bus. Um, Let's see what else we got here. I'm so happy you're so I'm so happy y'all are here. Um, I've been uh, working a lot with Dr. David E. Smith lately on uh, this new hate Ashbury. Let's see if you can see it here. Y'all see that? My high tech. But um. Yeah, so I've been doing that, and it's nice to just be hanging out with y'all. It's it's really wonderful. Um, Craig Donald McDonald, I think it was the New Year's closing show. Wow, they are getting knocked off. Oh yeah, yeah. The yep, I know the Red Door Garden. Yes, Cynthia, it's gone, man. I mean, hopefully whoever gets in there. Uh, will utilize it. I mean, it's enormous. It's that backyard's probably bigger than my damn apartment. You know, it's beautiful. All those trees. Um, we'll see. Um, there's a good chance that I'm going to be uh, having an office up there on Hate Street. Um, I can't promise that, but uh, uh, hopefully, and uh, hopefully, I'll be more on the street and be able to um, check into these things more in person. Um, Hey, Trudy Emmons from Sonoma County, uh, and Dan Guliani, you do love the BART. I'm from here, and for some reason, BART, I have a problem with BART. <laughs> I call it BARF. Um, I mean, it's funny. I don't know if it's because I'm from here. I rode the subway all the time in New York, but um, uh, let's see, Cynthia. Cynthia Johnson says, rent is so damn expensive to be treated like the car's we need to make the money to live here is a bit of a slap in the face. You know what, Cynthia, thank you. It's like, 
if I'm paying, I mean, luckily there's rent control and I've lived here a long time, but if I'm paying what I'm paying and then, and I've got a car, uh, yeah, and you need a car to go get the money, it's a, it's a, it is that catch-22 thing, what am I going to ride my bike to my old job, what a, there's no way I couldn't ride my job, my bike to my old job, I mean, luckily now I don't have to ride my bike to my job, because my job's in my kitchen, which is where we are, which is 8th Street Voice Live, What's Up Wednesdays, thanks for coming everybody, where we talk about everything but that kitchen sink, ha ha ha, if I had canned laughter I would <laughs> I would give it to you. We can talk about the kitchen sink if you want to. That's cool with me. But um, hey, Charlie Cats, what's that's that's okay. Dan, right on. Sorry, y'all. My quit. Let's see. Craig McDonald says, I remember a car chase through the city the night they closed down Winterland. I had heard one of those banners was st stolen. Looking to see if I can find a post. I don't know, Dan. You know anything about that, Cynthia? You know anything about a car chase when Winterland closed down? I actually was at um, that last week. I saw the Tom Petty show at Winterland. It must have been 1978. Um, I saw Tom Petty there. I actually saw the Sex Pistols there when I was 15 years old, y'all. I did not see the dead that run. Um, Cynthia might have been there. Cynthia, were you there at that? Um, yeah, that's funny. I don't know about a car chase. Dan, do you know anything about a car chase? The night they closed Winterland down, and they stole one of the banners. Craig, what was on the banner? Do you know? I mean, was it like something that said the Grateful Dead, or was it like a, a, a the, the marquee? Oh, I meant to be treated like our cars are evil is a bit of, oh, I got you, Cynthia. You meant, Cynthia meant that to be treated like our cars are evil is a bit of a slap in the face. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, my dear. Um, yeah, so here we are, Hate Street Boys Live, and um, well, what's up Wednesdays, and where we talk about everything but the kitchen sink, community, hyper local, global, with a global perspective, um, and with the the screw up last week where my audio, I don't know what was happening. I mean, who knows if it was my end, but I was freaking out about it for a while and then I realized you know what if we all just show up and do the best we can um, it's really what matters and create community with each other and 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 create a place where we can all talk um, share our, our, our anybody got a good joke um, you know our thoughts concerns new year um, personally I'm I'm really excited about this year I think um, Maybe excited isn't the right word, but um, I think slowing down makes everything better, y'all. <laughs> um, not being in a rush to rush out the door. Um, just a little shout out to COVID. I, I think I said that on a radio show I just did, but um, I don't. And I mean, all due respect to anybody that's uh, suffered from that, but. I think it slowed everybody down in a, in a major way, uh, not to go down the COVID road, but I'm just saying that being here on this thing, um, Hate Street Voice Live, What's Up Wednesdays, um, it, it's, it means a lot. Um, of course, we've got the print magazine, and um, it's a joy to be a part of this. And I don't know if you all saw this one, but I have a stack. Um, Hey, and if anybody, you know, if you want to write down, hey, I need a copy, you know, ping me. You can put stuff down here. You can email me at hatestreetvoice at gmail. Um, if you need me to send out some copies of the latest, greatest, I can send you a digital version as well. Um, let's see what time I got here, 727. Um, usually I do or did, I was doing this thing called the, halfway halfway hate street which is the halfway point of the show um, if we can guess let's see how should I do that um, well we'll do that next week this week is just about chatting with y'all there's Cynthia Cynthia says I've always loved the story about the dyslexic 
<laughs> Cynthia Johnson with a joke. God bless you, girl. Cynthia Johnson. I've always loved the story about the dyslexic, agnostic insomniac who stayed up all night wondering if there really was a dog. <laughs> Canned laughter, y'all. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dan Gillian, send me some links and I can help plug it in a few places. Aw, thanks, Dan. Uh, a link to this thing? Um, let's see. All right. Uh, well, um, I should have done that, shouldn't I? Let's see. Is it right here? Oh, okay. Event Earl. Copy. Hopefully I don't screw everything up here. Copy. Here's the... I don't know if that helps. Um, that's where we are. Um, hey, Dan. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is number two. Number one was a disaster. Hey, he's Cree McCree. <laughs> we got New Orleans in the house. Hey, Cree McCree. Dang, this is great. That, thanks for chiming in there, Cree. Um, I was just down in New Orleans hanging out with Cree, who's working on an amazing book of her uh, um, collection of her best uh, amazing music journalist, just journalista in general. Uh, the name of that book. Oh, geez, Cynthia, you're going to kill me. You, oh, you've been here all along, Cree? You've been quiet, Cree? <laughs> Cree? <laughs> what? Um, uh, your book is called, oh my God, we came up with it. You got to, sorry, I'm on the spot here, but uh, can you write down the name of your book, that uh, the, the working title? Um, it's badass. And um, yeah, it was great seeing you down in New Orleans, Cree. I'm just thinking you got to get back up here to San Francisco and uh, hang out in the hate. It's so good to see y'all. Music writing. Dancing with words. My life under deadline. Dancing with words. This book is on its way to being published and hopefully um, what we're thinking by the end of this year. I mean, it's stories from everybody from... Phew, well, there's a blues traveler, spin doctors thing. There's, uh, gosh, sorry, Cree. Uh, there's a, a, a PJ Harvey story. There's a, um, man, I went over this stuff, didn't I? A jo John Campbell, who was an amazing, amazing guitar player we, we used to know in New York City back in the 80s and early 90s. God bless you, Cree. It's good to have you here. Uh, Charlie Cat says, thank you for the invita invitation to join in these meetings. It makes me feel connected to the hate again. Aww. You're welcome, Charlie. That's what it's all about. Where are you coming in from again? Let me look up here. You told me, but I, I got to get this so my, I don't have to keep scrolling up. Um, that's awesome, Charlie. And, and we're, I mean, it's, oh, Seacliff. All right. Well, you're still in the city at least. Yeah, man, that's that's beautiful. I'm gonna send you a little love right there. Um, my brother magazine in the East Bay does this. I it's a thing. See, Cliff, I thank you, Charlie. I, I scrolled and found out. Glad to have you in the city. Come on over to the Hate. You know, we'll hang out. Or I'll come out to see Cliff for Christ's sakes. Um, uh, now I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, I'm just so, I'm giddy. It's so nice to have everybody here. Um, and again. Uh, I think that um, the main thing here is to, it's a show and it's not necessarily at this point, number two, a, 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 oh, we're going to do this and then, you know, I'm not Howard Stern uh, yet, and nor do I want to be. But um, the idea is for, for, for viewers like you to chime in and I am going to start having some sort of contests. Um, I was doing a thing at uh, Love on Hate over here, Sunny, we love you, shout out to Sunny, Sunshine Powers, Love on Hate, um, where I was doing a halftime uh, uh, quiz, or you know, a trivia question, and, um, and we would give away something. So I gotta figure out what it is, maybe I'd give away one of my dead books, um, which is right behind me here. In fact, I'll set that up next week where It'll be a trivia question about the hate. And uh, I just wanted to make sure 
<laughs> I was able to get on live with audio and video this time, y'all. Um, which it seems like we're here. What does John B. Krug say here? I lived in the hate in the early '70s. All welcome to the, all welcome to network at SF Bay Area Underground Media '60s and '70s. Hey, send that link over. Send that. Send that link, and uh, y'all can t tune in. Heads love dead books. Really? Thanks, Dan. That's a big. That's a really. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, I'll put a little laugh on that one. Uh, yeah, Don, Dan Guglielmo, you, you're that book that that that. Well, this is the second one you put out now. It's it's badass where the the deadheads are writing their own stories and sending them in. And <laughs> um, I don't really want to go down the dead road too much because you know the playing in the sand cancellation. This is about the hate. Um, hopefully, you all saw my interview with Bob Weir on. Um, YouTube by now. Um, let's see if I can bring it up. Sorry for the typing here. Um, in case for anybody that didn't, I mean, this isn't about me, but if, you know, we're there, we might as well, right? Um, uh, Cynthia's got a badass. I'd like to give Cynthia a shout out for her amazing uh, website, um, which uh, I'm going to send a link to in two seconds once I pull this guy up. Um, that's that. Sorry, y'all. A little uh, poking around, poking around, poking around. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, let's see. There's that, and then I'll come back to y'all. And then there's that link. And then if you check out Cynthia Johnston's Cree, you should check this out. It is www. Cynthia, I hope it's cool that I'm. I mean, it is public, right? Uh, my way is the highway. Shoutout.com. Y'all check that shit out. Pretty badass. That's Cynthia Johnston's uh, an extremely informed, informative, incredibly well written um, foray into the workings of, let's say, everything from Hunter S. Thompson to the White House. Is that right, Cynthia? Did that narrow it down? I'm drinking a tantric turmeric synergy kombucha. Hoping to have them sponsor me someday <laughs> so I can have free kombucha the rest of my life. Uh, what's Dan saying here? Have you heard if they're were any other stories, stores under the chopping block? Um, you know, any other stores under the chopping block? Good question. Um, the ones that are there, the, the, that are there seem to be doing all right, although, um, yeah, I mean, Robert's Hardware is not going anywhere for sure. They've been there since 1920, since 1930, 1929. Um, and distractions is, excuse me, hanging in there. Uh, Gus's Market is blowing up. They're growing, which is, yay, we love you, Gus's Market. A little shout out to Gus's Market. Um, it's Psychedelic SF, my buddies who own um, Pipe Dreams. Hey, Cassie and Josh um, have just moved into, or <laughs> moved on to the whole corner, really. They live, yeah, it's amazing. The Psychedelic SF, they're, starting to take off. It's a art, uh, art gallery slash uh, meeting place for um, things like the, the Psychedelic SF is having meetings there. It's a really cool space. Um, but as far as anything coming under the chopping block, no. But I'll let you know if I hear anybody else. I mean, obviously Amoeba Records is surviving. Um, a lot of the clothing stores just went um, the Army Navy place uh, that's been there for a long time. It's been there since I went to college back in the '82. Uh, uh, I lived on the corner of Hayton Ashbury back way back when. Um, ben Fong Torres was my teacher. Oh, I'm very proud to say that. If you haven't seen his documentary, by the way, y'all, uh, "Like a Rolling Stone: The Life and Times of Ben Fong Torres," I highly recommend uh, you find a way to find find a way to see that. Um, Craig McDonald asks, is the theater club still, theater cub? Theater club, 
kid or cub? I think he meant to say club. Uh, thanks for that, Earl. John B. Krug. Um, there is no theater on Haight Street at the moment. Um, there was the Straight Theater. That's long gone. And the Red Vic, I think I just mentioned a little earlier at the show just now. Um, Red Vic's gone. And I used to go there, I used to go there in the 70s. Is that possible? Um, it was a teeny little theater, but they used to serve their popcorn with yeast and butter. It was, uh, I'll never forget that, being like 16 years old, going, what's this stuff? Yeah, it's really good. Saw the, uh, I think the final showing of um, The Big Lebowski. And uh, I think that was the last show they had at that theater. And then it became a place to house um, low-income folks. And now it's just gone. I did a little video, um, if you look on my Hate Street voice page, uh, looking inside the window, and it's just abandoned. A lot of trash on the ground, and you know, it it will behoove me to, to really kind of find out more. In fact, I will make a note of that, of being sort of like the actual brick and mortar places uh, here in Upper Haight. Um, writing a note to myself about that, brick and mortar actualities. Um, but I'll tell you, the vibe is still here in the hate. Cynthia, don't you think so? Uh, thank, yeah, that link. Okay, what? SF Bay Underground 60s and 70s Club. Yeah, Cynthia, you're welcome for the plug. You're welcome. Um, the 80s were cool. I mean, I used to go to the I-Beam all the time. Hey, y'all, give me a, a thumbs up if you went to the I-Beam. Oh, my God, I saw Adam Ant there and The Cure, Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, the replacements, uh, man, those are the days. The dinosaur Jr., fuck yeah. Um, Craig McDonald, anyone here knew Richard Steitman who ran the White Rabbit Head Shop? Theater Club was a biker bar. Um, does any, I didn't know Richard Steitman. Um, White Rabbit, though, uh, was Jim Siegel, um, who is actually, um, on many of the main guys featured in the magazine. Craig, hopefully you have a copy of the magazine, but this is the White Rabbit right here, actually. Um, and Jim Siegel, who I can, um, oh, that's the Red Vic too in that picture right there, sorry. High tech, y'all. Um, Anyway, that's the White Rabbit. Um, Jim Siegel, I'll, I'll do a little um, tag to him. Jim Siegel. See, he said he might come tonight to this little show we're having here. There we go. Jimmy, are you around? Um, let's see if he shows up. Love the vibe. It's still here. Oh, yeah, Cynthia, right? You know, I think even Bobby said it. It's like... It, it has its ups and downs, and, and every city is good and bad. I mean, New Orleans, Cree, I'm sure you could chime in, you know. New Orleans, it can be nirvana and amazing and a music haven and, 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 and such good people, and it could be a hellhole or, you know, flooded hole, um, or a flooded, flood, flooded place. Um, so... Oh, Craig, you and Jim and Richard. Oh, Jim and Richard were partners. Um, so Jimmy, if he comes in, he could tell you more about Richard. Um, yeah, Jimmy gives me a tour of the whole house that he lives in. Um, again, that's another another video that, that uh, just because we're talking about Jimmy, I'll show you the, um, I'll put, give you a link to the, to the um, tour. Um, keep talking amongst yourselves there. <laughs> This is so fun. I just got to really, um, you know, I'm a one-woman show, y'all, <laughs> in more ways than one. Uh, here's the uh, link to the, the tour of the interior of Jimmy's amazing house, the Westerfeld House. It's actually a national treasure, I believe. Not a national treasure, but a, definitely a historic, um, deemed a historic building in San Francisco. It's that, I used to call it the Charlie Manson building. Um, Hey, thanks, Dan. I'm just winging it here. <laughs> hey, man, you know what? People show up, and I, you know, if people want to talk about whatever. Hopefully, I can get uh, it dialed in where my 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 uh, 
my uh, comment. The comments aren't scrolling by so fast, but um, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's fun to take a walk through that building we've all looked at, going, "Holy shit!" That Charlie Manson was in that thing. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I got to tell y'all that uh, the magazine's starting to get legs, and Dr. David E. Smith, who founded the Hate Ashbury Free Clinic, has been so supportive and. Um, I'm managing to get myself, a, um, you know, some help so I can get donations, you know, um, tax-free, uh, a complete write-off so uh, people can give me bigger chunks of money, which is great. I mean, this is, this is it. This is, you know, um, I mean, let's be real. I'm going to be 60 in a, uh, in a couple months, and, you know, am I going to go out and get a job right now, y'all? I don't think so, unless I have to. But I, I, I'm pretty much want to be here, uh, here in the hood, um, the beloved hood, and uh, and keep spreading the love, keep connecting people, keep telling the stories, keep sharing the stories, um, keep the love and light alive, and the color and the music. Um, oh, by the way, that is a little bit of an announcement. Uh, Cynthia says, let's see, what do you say, Cynthia? I did my Christmas shopping on Hate Street and felt all kinds of love from everyone I encountered. Aww. Every shop welcomed me so warmly. The vibe is still there for sure. That's lovely, Cynthia. Yay. This is so awesome. Aww. Um, but yeah, oh, um, Sonny, who runs the Love on Hate, or owns and runs and is runs Hate Street a lot of the time, uh, badass. She had Ron Cat playing live outside. Um, few weeks back and oh my god was that a blast it's Christmas right before Christmas and the cable car truck came up with uh, the elves and they were hanging out with tie-dye Santa and there's Ron Cat playing funkadelic shit and I'm telling you man it, it outside safe people were cool um, the cops were cool you know it ended at 8 started at I think 2 o'clock and he played four hours free outside corner of Masonic and Hate Street. Now, that's beautiful. You know, that, that created so much community and so much love. And, you know, especially after these weird days we were having, you know, this weird couple of years, it's so nice to shake it up. And um, anyway, she said, uh, I said, when are you going to do another music thing? And, and she said, uh, well, why don't we do, do it? I said, you know, every month would probably be too much. And, you know, just for her, it's, 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 you know, it's a lot. And um, she said, uh, well, why don't we do it every time your magazine launches, which is four times a year, right? So um, it'll be, where are we now? It'll be spring, right around my birthday. It'll be March. And she's going to, we're going to have a live band every four times a year uh, on the corner of Masonic and hate and uh, celebrate community. Hey, yeah, it does, Dan. It really does. Yep. Aw. Dan, i got to meet you in person. Forgive me if we have, but I don't think we have. Have we? I really don't think we have. But kudos to you on those books, y'all. Um, and feel free to put a link in to, to how people can get your book, Dan. Um, or, you know, if you want to. It, it, the stories, dead, Deadhead Stories, Dead Stories, it's, it's wonderful. Two of them. There's two of them, y'all. And... If you're into the Grateful Dead, which I am, actually, Cynthia, you would love those books. You might have even seen the one when you were house sat for me, Cat Sat. Um, it's a beautiful book, beautiful books, beautifully produced, beautifully put together. Mm. And um, yeah, it's part of the family. Dan, in passing, but I will make sure I stop by in a couple months. Oh, yeah, you come on out. Come on out. Uh, but yeah, I've been busy working on the, um, I actually am working on a, uh, applying for a fellowship called Psychedelic, Psychedelic Journalism, y'all, um, at Cal Berkeley. And um, that's been my focus. That's due uh, by the end of this month. So I've been researching, I, uh, telling the story of, of, of my, actually my own story and knowing Timothy Leary and you know, the crazy travels I've had and now I'm working with Dr. Dave. It's sort of like that big full circle where you know all the weirdness, born and raised here, go to New York to get away from all the fucking hippies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
It's true. I really did move to New York to get away from the fucking, oh, whatever, dude. And, um, you know, got my chops going. And then um, came back. And now I'm in the dead center. Dead. It's an operative word. Dead center of um, everything I thought was, you know, hippy-dippy. Uh, completely resonates for me uh, at this point in my life, at this point in the world. Um, and... I'm just tickled that you guys are all here. It, it truly means the world to me. Um, and, you know, if people, people want to connect. That's, 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 I think, that's, uh, I think that's, the, that's one thing, actually, in this fellowship I'm applying for and working on my story, what is the story uh, pitch, is that depression, like they're finding that um, psilocybin is treating PTSD and depression and even MDMA is treating depression and, and all these psychedelic things are they're finding um, um, bipolar all of that but uh, one of the therapists uh, who works at UCSF was telling me that um, depression is basically being disc is a feeling of disconnection from humanity of being disconnected from from others and this whole thing about feeling connected and how psychedelics are helping people remember what it feels like to be connected and the whole thing about the mycelium. If you haven't seen Fantastic Fungi, watch that movie. Like, don't turn turn off your computer and go watch Fantastic Fungi right now. It's it, I've seen it. I might even watch it myself tonight again for the tenth time. Um, oh, thank you. It's a it's a orange. Thank you, Regan Irwin. Thanks for checking in. It's a orange velvet little number I got on Hate Street, which. That little shop is now gone, but I got this little top. It's very, I love velvet. It's um, its very hippie of me, but thanks. Thanks, Regan Irwin. Where are you checking in from? Um, but yeah, going back to the, 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 the psychedelics treating treating all these things, it's, it's, everybody's yearning to be connected again. I mean, I think we all have, and that the mycelium is all connected, and that and then it just sounds so hippy-dippy, but it's true. Um, when we connect with each other, we feel good, and I think that's why dancing feels so good. Um, being creative, because you turn other people on through your music, through your writing, through your dance, whatever it is, whatever floats your boat, whatever, you know, cooking. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not even stoned. Wish I was. But, um, Cynthia, we all need to belong and to feel like we belong. Yay. Yay. Yes, indeed. Oh, hey, Regan. All right, you're coming in from New Jersey. Someone sent this live in a Grateful Dead group. Oh, cool. Yay, awesome. Welcome, Re Regan. Um, I got, do you have the magazine, Hate Street Voice? I'll, um, I can get you a copy of the magazine. If you, um, you can ping me at, uh, here's my, you can ping me here and I'll mail you out a copy. Hate Street Voice at Gmail. Um, all right, Regan, welcome. That's so cool. All right, I'm going to give a little love to that one. Woohoo! I always like the name Regan. Is that how I say it? Our girlfriend's name is Regan, so I call her Regan. You might say Reagan, but Regan. Regan's better. Um, New Jersey's in the house, you guys. I'd love to send you a copy. Uh, you can private message me or whatever you want to do, and I'll mail you out some some copies of the Hate Street Voice, and I actually do have only a few left of the Bobby edition, um, and uh, happy to mail one of those out to you. I also have digital versions of them all, so Regan, because you're chiming in, I will love to mail you out a copy of this, and, um, and then I'll tell you more about the, right behind me, this is my Grateful Dead book that I wrote in, uh, I wrote it in, what did I write it in? Wrote it in 95, it came out, and then this is the 2015 edition that came out in 2015. Uh, and it's got some of the best stories, Stanley Mouse, Timothy Leary, um, Waylon Jennings is in there of all people, um, Shay Ray, uh, added a few new chapters, but um, hit me up and I'll mail you out some stuff. I've even got trucker hats, although a lot of them are uh, stuck on a ship down in San Diego, which, thank you, COVID. Um, that whole backup of, of merchandise, I don't know if you all know about that, but I had a huge batch of hats uh, 
you know, merch come in and, and they've been sitting on a boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have trucker hats and uh, Cynthia says, what? I need some hard copies of the latest HSV. Gave all mine away. Woohoo! All right, Cynthia, note to self, I'll mail them out. I know you sent me a little thing with your address. Send mail out to Sin. Ah, thanks, Dan. I really appreciate that. That book came from my heart. I, that that book was um, that book was a matter of sitting back and just having people tell me stories about a uh, Grateful Dead. And I started to see these patterns. Speaking of wanting to be connected and patterns, Timothy Leary was all about patterns. Um, I like to call them connecting the micro dots, um, connecting the dots, seeing how things relate to each other. But that book happened so organically, like, oh, this is a first time for a show chapter, or, or this is, I mean, a story. This is a getting fed, uh, eating story, uh, getting too high story, um, being on stage story. Um, disillusioned even um, and then the getting it of course what an honor to be able to you know not that I made tons of money but I was able to to live for a year and, and just go out and talk to people and hear stories it's, to me that's what that's my joy and I think Cree and I think probably Dan you feel the same way um, listening to people's stories is like gives, brings me such joy um, you know, me sitting here talking like this is like kind of like the opposite. Usually I'm the one listening, but I got to keep the show like floating. But I, I really want to hear what everybody else is saying. Um, but yeah, um, I love story collecting um, and, and, and what, makes, what makes people tick. It reminds me of that journalist, Studs Turkle. I think some of y'all probably heard of Studs Turkle was my dad's favorite um, you know it doesn't matter if it's the, the the laundromat guy or the or I mean sorry the you know the dry cleaning lady or the you know the butcher around the corner or uh, you know the electrician down the street shoe guy the cobbler everybody's got a story and oh thanks Regan yeah you agree I love stories yay well I want to know more about you girl um, are we friends? I hope we are. Um, I don't, I'm scared to go off this page because um, if I do, I might lose everybody. What do, oh my God, people, y'all. It's 7.56. We only have four minutes left. So, y'all, if, if you can email me or ping me here, um, either here on Hate Street Voice or at my private Linda Kelly, uh, even on my Deadhead page, um, let me know what you'd like to talk about, things that are on your mind, what's up Wednesdays, I Hate Street Voice Live, every Wednesday, 7 to 8, uh, where we talk about everything but the kitchen sink. But we, we could talk about the kitchen sink if you all want to. It's totally okay. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to ignore the kitchen sink. That'd be kind of mean. I and mean, they do serve us well. We are connected to the kitchen sink. I mean, a lot of people have dishwashers, but I personally, sorry, I didn't mean to hit my mic. I personally dig washing dishes. Does anybody out there like washing dishes? I do. Is that weird? Um, of course, it's only me. Uh, oh, thanks, Dan. Dan says, I did an awesome job. Kept you smiling the whole time. Aww. Anything to keep y'all smiling. Awesome vibes. Here, definitely. Oh, thanks, Regan. Much love. And Cynthia and Cree. Yay. Um, oh, and I got to name everybody. I had to scroll down. Dan, of course. And uh, where, who, wait. Oh, sorry. Craig McDonald. And, and, oh, Craig McDonald. And uh, <laughs> John B. Krug. Um, man, y'all, it just means the world to me. And it, it's beautiful. We, let's keep it going. Charlie Katz and Seacliff. Shout out to you, bro. Let's see you, see you around. And, um, We'll see you all next week, I hope. Tell your friends. Wake up the kids. Trudy Emmons from Sonoma, thank you for coming. You know, you can, you can uh, you know, what is it, tag people. Get, get people on this cuckoo bus, this uh, Hate Street Voice Live bus, where we don't really know where we're going, but we're going to have a lot of fun, hopefully, and stay connected. And, you know, and good, bad, ugly, fun, funky, colorful, dark, whatever you want to talk about. Even the kitchen sink. 
<laughs> uh, I'm cracking myself. Oh, great show tonight. Oh, thanks, Craig McDonald. Thank you, John B. Krug. All right, Regan, thanks for getting on the bus. Uh, Cynthia Cree. Um, and next time I uh, next week I'll have a, a, a giveaway. I'll, uh, night, Craig. Much love. Much love from the hate. Um, and next week I, I'm going to come up with a, a trivia question uh, of some sort about the dead, about the hate, something, and I'll give away a dead book. How about that? Personally signed. And um, we'll have a little trivia, Hate Street, Hate Ashbury trivia. Um, and a book giveaway. It's been fun. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks for a great show. Love you, girl. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Love from the hate. Peace. Let's stay connected. Let's be kind. And let's keep the stories. Go, let's go out there and make a lot of good stories, right? Let's get some good stories rolling. Be the story. <laughs> Aw, thanks for joining, y'all. And um, I'm glad everything worked this week. It was Last week was a disaster. But, hey, you know, disasters are what make things like this even better, right? So, all right, y'all. Um, love from the hate. This has been Hate Street Voice Live. What's up Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m. And we will see you the 19th of January, 2022. And hey, have a great week, everybody. Um, yeah, that's it. Love from the hate. And uh, God bless y'all for checking in and being here. It means the world. Tell your friends. Let's get on the bus. All right, 8 o'clock. Peace.